In this video you will learn how you can configure ESLint together with TypeScript. And actually the first question is, do we need ESLint together with TypeScript at all? And yes, typically we want to use together pretty ESLint and TypeScript. And TypeScript is a really popular solution nowadays to get typings, so a strict JavaScript which actually means before runtime in transpiling phase, we will get errors from TypeScript regarding our problems with typings. We will together with TypeScript use prettier just because we want to prettify our code. Why do we need ESLint? Additionally to prettier, we want also to have some rules regarding our code. So these are rules regarding code style that you can use in specific team. But the main problem is that we can't use ESLint directly with TypeScript. It doesn't work out of the box with TypeScript, it only works with JavaScript. This is why we must use additional package. And as you can see here, this is the official website TypeScript ESLint.io and here inside docs you can see that we must install TypeScript ESLint parser and TypeScript ESLint ESLint plugin. And obviously additionally ESLint and TypeScript. The main point is that we must install a parser so this specific library can parse TypeScript code. And by default ESLint can't work with TypeScript code, but we can inside ESLint provide a parser. And this is exactly what we must do. So let's look on the example. Here I already generated a project with a TypeScript file. Now here first of all we must install ESLint. As you can see it is successfully installed and now we must add here TypeScript ESLint parser. So yarn add TypeScript ESLint parser. And last but not least we must install additionally a plugin and this is TypeScript ESLint ESLint plugin. Our next step here is to configure ESLint. And typically inside our root folder we want to create ESLintRC file. And I already pasted here such configuration. And if you used ESLint previously with JavaScript, you are not writing parser, plugins, and inside extends you typically have just ESLint recommended and then maybe some rules for your project. This is what we have for JavaScript, but for TypeScript it is not enough. We need first of all a parser here. Here we are specifying what parser ESLint must use to work with TypeScript. And secondly, we are extending here not only ESLint recommended, but also rules for TypeScript, and they are coming from these two packages. Now let's have a look on our TypeScript code. As you can see here inside source main TS, I have this TypeScript code. And actually it is not really good code, because first of all we used here any, and here we have const bar inside, and we are not using it at all. But actually here inside package JSON, I created a script build, which is just TSC. This is just a command, so TypeScript will compile our main JS file. So we can jump here inside console and just write yarn build. And as you can see we won't get any errors, here everything was compiled successfully and we're good to go. And actually this is valid TypeScript code. But here we have some problems which ESLint can show us. But for this we must create a new command for ESLint to check our files. So here let's create a new script and we can call it lint. And here inside I want to write ESLint dot and here minus minus extension dot ts. In this case we are specifying that our ESLint must work with extension ts and nothing else. Now here we can jump inside console and just write yarn lint. And as you can see here we are using ESLint and we are getting warnings. And this is really awesome because here we have a TypeScript file. And as I already said, it all works just because we are using this additional parser. It won't work just by default inside ESLint. And as you can see here, we are getting some warnings. And here on the right you can see that all this stuff is coming not from ESLint rules itself, but from the rules of TypeScript ESLint. And here we are getting foo is assigned a value, but is never used. Let's check this out, here inside our main TS we have our function foo, but we really didn't use it. Also we are getting here unexpected any, which actually means ESLint can highlight you all your places where you used any, which is not the best approach. And our third warning here, bar is assigned a value, but never used. And here we have a local property, which is really never used. 
And here I want to talk regarding this property, because the point is, you must say, okay, this is totally fine, but I actually can configure my TypeScript in a way to get all these things, like values are never used or any is not allowed. And actually this is an important part, you can jump back here inside our tsconfig.json and here we can configure all this stuff, you are totally right. So we can paste here no unused locals, true, and no unused parameters, true. And actually now at the moment when we will try to build our TypeScript, we will get an error. As you can see here we are getting error, bar is declared, but its value is never read. But here is an important difference, actually const bar equals 1 should not break our code, because we might want to use it just for testing. It doesn't make a lot of sense that our TypeScript can't build, and as you can see here our TypeScript was not built, this is important. I don't want to get such error from TypeScript, because all these errors from the TypeScript I'm meaning that we didn't build our code, and it doesn't make a lot of sense, because when you're debugging something, you want to create some properties, you want to write console logs. If you have all these rules inside TypeScript file, then your TypeScript will never be built. And this means that every single time you must really remove all these properties, and your code must be 100% valid. This is not what you want. For debugging purposes, it makes a lot of sense to have all these checks just with ESLint and not with TypeScript because then the code won't be built. This is why, for example, bar is declared but its value is never read is a bad rule for TypeScript config, but it is awesome to have such error inside ESLint, because actually you can just run ESLint, you can see all these warnings, but your code will still be built. This is why we can safely remove from tsconfig these two rules, because we know that we have these rules inside our ESLint. And this is totally fine and this is much better approach. And now you might for sure want to ask, ok, but where I can get all these rules regarding TypeScript for ESLint? And here is the official website, typescript yeslint.io slash rules, and here you can get all these rules, which are really awesome. For example, here we are getting a rule, how we must specify in correct way our arrays with generic type. And if you just start to learn TypeScript, I highly recommend you to enable yeslint for your TypeScript environment. Because in this case you will get a lot of warnings and additional help to know how to write your TypeScript code better. And actually if you are interested to learn everything that you need to know inside TypeScript, make sure to check this video also.